Hello fellow book dragons and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here My name is Joanna and I love to talk about books on this channel specifically fantasy books and today I'm doing my top 10 books my top 10 fantasy books of 2022 Before delving into the top 10, I have a few rules and stipulations that I have for myself to create this top 10 and to share with you. So this is only fantasy books. These are the top 10 fantasy books I read last year. I have, I have ranked them. Uh, the top three, well, the top two, the top two really could be at any place, at any, they could change. I think, but basically, like I I've tried my best to rank them, okay? M my top four books were very solidified, easy peasy, I knew which ones they were. It was hard to then put them in order. Ultimately, I'll let you know what made me decide what way. Um, what else is there? There's no rereads on this list. Absolutely no rereads. And also there's one book per author per series. Um, not even per series, per author, period. Because in my bullet journal, I have two books I created a top 12, to be honest, in my bullet journal, just because I had 12 squares. Uh, and I have one author represented twice in that top 12, but I took one of the books out for here because I wanted only one book per author, one book per series, per everything. So that is my rule, no rereads, let's go with this top 10. Another thing before we start, I would absolutely love, I mean, some of you already know because I've commented on your videos saying which, what my top one was, but if you don't know yet, uh, and I know I haven't been posting a lot, but if you if you had an inkling of what my top, let's say, three are, let me know in the comments and I want to see if you were correct and for you also to see. So let's go with the top 10. In the number 10 spot is a book that doesn't really belong to be in my top 10 fantasy books of last year. Yes and no. Yes, because I didn't read a lot of fantasy last year in general because I had my six month slump of fantasy where I didn't read any fantasy at all. I had my post uh, break of fog where I couldn't really remember the books that were in the first quarter of the year. So a lot of the books that I read in January, February and March have this like fog thing on them. And then from March until July, I didn't read almost anything at all. And I only started picking up, I think in August or in September, July, August or September, I don't remember. But in the late summer, I started picking up fantasy again. So I didn't read a ton of fantasy last year. Not as much as I usually do. Um, so this book being on the top 10 kind of makes sense. But also it makes sense because of what it represents. But also, is it really like... Had I read like some of the series I really want to read this year, this wouldn't have made it on the list. I already know. That book is... Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the, this book is very bright. This book, I have a vlog where I read it, which I will leave linked in the cards and in the description of this video. This is the final book in the Throne of Glass series. Now, if you're new here and you don't know this about me, this series is what made me into a fantasy reader. I started this series when the third book was coming out so years ago now. I wasn't a fantasy reader before then, and this series is really what got me into YA fantasy. This is the series that kind of sparked my love for fantasy in general. And I finally picked this last book up in January of 2022. I was reading this for the Goodreads uh, challenge that uh, Sam or Redgrave Reads created and I filmed it, I vlogged it, and I wasn't planning on picking this up immediately, but I'd read Tower of Dawn in that vlog and then I picked this up on a whim immediately after because I just needed to know how this was gonna conclude. So this is on this list because, is it the best fantasy books? No, no, no. This is my favorite fantasy books I read last year. And uh, this one is on the list because it concluded that series. It concluded the series that started it all for me. I owe a lot to this series in particular of why I'm here, why I love fantasy so much, and why I've read all these amazing other books that I love now. So that's why this is on this list. Not because it's amazing, stunning, spectacular, but because of what it represents emotionally for me. And because I rate my books on enjoyment, it's why it's here. I swear that is the only book I'm gonna do this huge caveat for. In the number nine spot, a book that maybe some of you will be surprised to see this author so low on the list, but this is also a book where I was really nervous getting into it, and that is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I'd heard a lot of mixed things about this book, to be honest, and this is one of the last books. This is the last full-length novel I picked up in 2022, which is why I never post these kinds of videos. I don't film these kinds of videos until the year is over, because I finished this on Christmas Day? Christmas Boxing Day? Did I finish this on Boxing Day? I think I finished this on Boxing Day or something like that. So, or even after. So th that's why I wait, because I knew I was gonna love this because it's Brandon Sanderson. In this book, 
we have three main POVs. We have Rathen, who is a priest. We have Sereni, who is a princess betrothed to the prince of this kingdom, and she arrives in this kingdom. But when she arrives, uh, her husband, uh, Prince Raiden, is said that he's dead. But what actually happened is he came down with a sickness that before a time, a specific time, when people had this sickness, they became gods, but now they just become really, really sick and they get exiled into the city of Elantris. Uh, and so that's kind of the main pitch of the story. And I'd heard from so many people that this book either was like just not as good as all of his, his other works or on the contrary, that this one was really good and people didn't understand why uh, there was so much quote unquote hate for Elantris. And I kind of agree with the latter. I don't understand why people don't absolutely love this. Okay, I could see it because it's not as action-packed as some of his other books, I think, in maybe. Um, but what I loved about this is the political scheming. If you like politics in your fantasy books, then this is the Brandon Sanderson book for you. More than any of his other books, I find. And if you don't want to start with Stormlight immediately. This, as of right now, is a standalone. There's a few short stories that you could pick up in the world of Elantris. But this book really took me by surprise because, one, I absolutely love the politics in this book. And two... This book contains my favorite, well, okay, not my favorite because that spot is like Vin forever, but my second favorite Brandon Sanderson female main character of all time. I absolutely love Sereni. I loved her the second she was on the page. I, I don't know, I loved her. I loved the politics in this book. I, I, I wasn't as emotionally invested as I was in his other works, which is why it's probably this low on the list. Uh, so yes, on an emotional investment, it wasn't the greatest for me, but I absolutely loved my time reading it. I thought it was fun. It was engaging. I loved the politics. I loved the, the little group of uh, nobles that we have here and that are like trying to plot things. They are so, so fun and so cute. And I love Serene and I love Raiden and I love everything that happens in Elantris. I just, I just loved it. I had a really, really good time with this. Uh, the only thing I didn't have was a huge emotional connection to the characters like I do for, for example, the Mistborn series or for the Stormlight Archive. But that's it. Other than that, I loved it. I love this book a lot and I'm really happy I finally picked it up. Next up in the number eight spot is a book that totally took me by surprise and honestly unfortunately this book suffers from the post breakup fog so I read this before and I don't really remember a lot of details so I, I know I need to reread this but I remember how I felt when I was reading it and that is Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. I love this so much so that I did a, a review just for this book, which I will leave linked up here and in the description, of course, so you can check it out. This book, all I knew going in was that it had a stunning cover and that it was a villain origin story and that it was going to be a 12 book series made up of either four trilogies or three quartets. I don't remember which one it is, um, but I picked this up as a buddy read with my friend Yolene and she ended up liking it uh, not as much as I did, clearly, um, but she ended up liking it as well. But for me, this was such a surprise. And I remember that something that took me really by surprise was that I read this book and it's not a small book by any means. Um, I didn't have the audiobook, and I, I love immersion reading. I immersion read almost every single book that I, that I read and I didn't have the audiobook for this. And so I thought it was gonna take me forever to read it just because I am so much slower at just pure, purely physically reading a book. And I was so invested in this that I just kept on turning the pages. I never felt behind, I think, on the goals for the on the daily goals for the buddy read because I was so invested. I was really taking the time to read these. And at the end, I even remember we had like two or three days of reading left and I asked Yolene, hey, do you mind if I just blow through the ending of this book? Because I am loving this so much that I just, I need to know. And she's like, no, go for it. I, I will message you when I'm done. And so I haven't continued on with the series because of that po like that fog thing. I remember absolutely falling heads over heels in love with this, but I know I need to reread this. And the third book is coming out this year, normally. I just need to re message Justin T. Call again um, because he had given, uh, sent us some links for also for his, some short stories in this world and amazing author interaction that I've had with him as well. Uh, so in this world we follow, this is a villain origin story, but in this book, I didn't really see it yet, but I am so excited to get there. I'm gonna read you just the synopsis of this book or like a part of the synopsis because I just think this book is so good. And it says every Dark Lord has an origin. So you know going in that this is his origin story. You've heard the story before. An orphan boy raised by a wise old man comes to a fuller knowledge of his magic and uses it to fight the great evil threatening his world. But what if that hero was destined to become the new Dark Lord? The Academy of Chen Balu has stood against magic for centuries, hidden from the world, acting from the shadows. It trains its students to detect and retrieve magic artifacts, which it jealously guards from misuse of others. 
Because magic is dangerous, something that heals can also harm, and a power that aids one person may destroy another. Of the Academy's many students, only the most skilled can become avatars, warriors, thieves capable of infiltrating the most heavily guarded vaults, and only the most determined can be trusted to resist the lure of magic. More than anything, Anev de, de Breath wants to become one of them. But Anev carries a secret. Unlike his classmates who were stolen as infants from the capital city, Anev was born in the village of Chain Balu, was believed to be executed and then unknowingly raised by his parents' killer. 17 years later, he struggles with the burdens of a forbidden magic, a forgotten heritage, and a secret deformity. When Anev is subsequently caught between the warring ideologies of his priestly mentor and the academy's masters, he must finally decide whether to accept the truth of who he really is or embrace the darker truth of what he may one day become. And honestly, I absolutely love this. And just so I'm gonna reread this and read the sequels and enjoy them. But yeah, this one took me really by surprise. I loved it. And I highly recommend it. Again, I have a full review if you wanna check it out. It's non-spoiler, so you can go ahead and watch that. In the number seven spot, I wasn't sure if I was gonna put this book or the sequel, uh, but I ended up putting this one because I remember just the emotions that I felt reading it. And that is Flamefall by Rosario Munda. I absolutely loved also the final book in the series, which is Fu Fury Song? Fury Song. Fury Song. Um, the reason I put Flamefall on the list, this is the second book, by the way, to Fireborn by Rosario Munda, in which we follow two main characters who live in this world where the ancient regime has been toppled and they are both orphans. Uh, Lee, however, has a secret, kind of, sort of a secret. He is the last surviving son of the dragon lords that have been torn down, who were the leaders of this old regime that has been torn down by the revolution. And nobody knows who he is except for Annie. She kind of knows, but they, it's like this unspoken rule of they know who each other are, but they don't really talk about it. And Annie, she was a peasant under the ancient regime and Lee's family actually executed her family and she was an orphan because of that. So their friendship is based on like something really tragic, but they really love each other and they have grown up together ever since the regime was toppled. And in the first book, they are both participating in this new regime's uh, new thing where you can, if you have a dragon, you can participate in dragon riding competitions to become the kind of like the, the first rider of the nation, but also the, the, the military that rides on the dragons. And so the first book is kind of that, and then from then on, things happen in these other books that kind of evolve the plot and are not just dragon riding competitions. Um, the reason I'm picking Flamefall instead of Fury Song is because I was reading Fury Song during an extremely busy time of my life. I was working uh, over 10 hours every day. I just couldn't, it took me too long to read Fury Song because of how busy I was. If that hadn't been the case, if I had read Fury Song as quickly as I read Flamefall, I think I would have picked the last book because it really did, um, hit me in my emotions. I felt a lot of things reading it. I was emotionally invested in the characters and everything that was happening, but Flamefall as well. And I remember that I was reading this and I was sending Elle over at Elliot Brooks voice messages of things that were happening and my reactions. And I just had such a good time with the series. And this series is technically YA, but it doesn't feel YA to me. It I, I don't know, I'm just so invested in these characters. I'm invested in the politics. I'm invested in the world and the lore and in everything. And I just love these so, so much. So if you are on the lookout for a series that's technically YA, so it doesn't read like super complex high fantasy, but that has dragons in it and that's fun, that's emotionally impactful, that has great politics, then give this one a go because I just have such a good time reading these books and they packed an emotional punch and they were just, I don't know, I loved them. I loved them so much. I love the questions they pose and I had such a good time reading them. So definitely pick this one up. If it has been on your radar, this is the push you need to go read the series because it is really, really good. The number six spot goes to a book that is literally the, the, the book that made me realize that sometimes, um, I don't know who said this. There, there was a live show that I watched of someone who said, every book is for everyone, but it's not just not always the right time. And I just picked up this book up at a time where I wasn't ready. I picked it up as a buddy read with my friend Sophia and I told her, listen, I'm 100 pages in, I cannot continue this book right now. I know I will not appreciate it as much as I will when I'm really in the mood for it. So she said, no problem, I'll finish it off. You go ahead and put it down. And I put it down for two or three months and then I picked it back up and it became an instant favorite. I inhale read it. I read it so, 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 so fast. And I loved it. And that book is of course The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This isn't like, if you are on the book internet at all, this book is not news to you. This is a dark academia fantasy story following six main characters who are the cream of the crop, the top 
of the top of magicians. They are the best in their fields and they are recruited by this man uh, named Atlas. And he comes to them and he says, hey, uh, do you want to join the Alexandrian Society? And they um, protect li the Library of Alexandria and its books and its scrolls and everything that, that is in there, this magical society protecting all these works. And the six character main characters go in and they arrive and they say, okay, right, so you have one year uh, of kind of initiation and uh, though only five of you can be admitted and they're like oh okay so it's kind of like the competition trip what they don't know is that when they say that uh, out of the six only five can be admitted the the person who doesn't get in gets like offed you know uh so that is the story of this book now um this book is not for everybody this book mixes magic and science in a way that even for me i'm reading these books and i'm like this goes over my head i will reread these next year when the third book comes out because i also read the atlas paradox but i did prefer this one a little bit more i was more emotionally invested in this first book um, but yeah, this one mixes science and magic in a very, very intricate way. Uh, this deals a lot with time and space-time continuum and that kind of stuff. So if, if you don't want to be thinking when reading a book, don't pick this up. If you need a book with main characters that are all lovable or where even one of them is lovable, don't pick this up because I don't think there's any characters in here that are likable or enjoyable or, I mean, enjoyable to follow, yes, but they're not likable, they're not lovable. And even the ones where you think, okay, maybe you, maybe you are the good guy, maybe you're the one I can root for, they do something and you're like, ah, yep, yeah, nope, nope, <laughs> you're not. So I don't know, there, there was just so much in this book that I enjoyed. I, I loved following these messed up characters. I loved following up their messed up dynamics. I love the magic system. I love how intricate everything is. And I love when a book messes with time. So I just thought this was super interesting that they even talked about that, you know? So it's really interesting how this works. And I just think this is such a, like, I don't know. I just really loved it. And which is why it's here on the list. And I almost would not have made, it wouldn't have made it on the list if I'd forced myself through it when I first read it. So this one was also a good reminder of that. So here it is at the number six spot. Number five on my list also suffers a bit from the fog that I told you from the beginning of the year. So I know I'm gonna reread this this year because the trilogy is gonna be completed and I didn't pick up the second book yet because I knew I was gonna reread the first one to then read the second one and read the third one and I didn't wanna have to reread two books, just only one book, and that is The Bone Daughter by Andrea Stewart. I actually have a vlog on the channel where I read this, which is the Elliot Brooks book, um, book tasting. And so I will leave that link up here and in the description, of course, so you can check it out. This one, we follow multiple main characters, one of which I don't wanna say anything. One of them is the Emperor's daughter. And uh, she has memory loss a little bit and she needs to gain back her memory because otherwise she cannot inherit the magic system and all of that from her father and he will give it to his apprentice. And so she's really trying to piece back together the pieces of the memory that she's lost and be like, what am I missing? What am I not understanding from this magic system? What do I need to know to be able to inherit everything from my father when he passes away? So that is one thing. The magic system is that it's kind of similar if you've read Foundry Side with the scribing in there. So every human being gives a piece of bone from the back here and then stuff is done with that magic, which is why it's bone shard. You know, and then we have another main character who is kind of a hero who ends up saving children and he just has this really, really cute animal companion and he's just looking for his wife who has disappeared. And that's kind of it. And there's other, a few other perspectives that I don't, don't really want to talk about because I don't remember how much is spoilers or not. Um, but I did really, really love this book. I thought it was so unique. It was so compelling and I just flew through it. I just loved it a lot. And I am going to definitely reread the, this this year and then pick up the second book and the third one comes out, I think in April. And so I'm gonna be binge reading this and hopefully uh, one of the other two books will find itself on my favorites of this year because I love this one so, so much and I cannot wait to continue on. And this one is her debut novel. So I thought that's, that was super impressive and yeah. I thought the magic system was unique, the characters were super lovable, and the this little animal companion that I really loved. I loved the tropes, I loved everything in here. And it wasn't too, too big. I mean, the subsequent books are bigger, but yeah, I thought it packed a punch in these pages and I loved it. Okay, we're on to the top four. My fourth book, I, listen, should a book like this be this high on the list? No, maybe not, but it is. This is my reading, this is my ranking, this is, this, this is me. Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. This is the history, part one, part one of the Targaryen dynasty from Aegon the Conqueror all the way through, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, just in case. If you're watching House of the Dragon and you don't wanna know, I'm not gonna say anything because then, you know, I'm not gonna say anything. But 
yeah, it follows part one of the history of the Targaryens. I picked this up on a freaking whim. I had just finished House of the Dragon. I was watching and rewatching and re rewatching, watching, rewatching all of the discussion videos that were being put out, all of the, 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 the just like best moments. I was rewatching scenes all the time on the internet. And then I went and spent a weekend in Paris uh, with my friend Sarah from Kind of Insanity on Instagram. And we talked about House of the Dragon nonstop. We rewatched our favorite scenes, which ended up being a like three hour marathon of rewatching our favorite scenes of House of the Dragon. And then I was driving, I mean, I was on the train home from Paris and I thought, you know what? Just, just, you have, the audiobook is on script. You have it downloaded on your phone. Just start it. Just start it. Why not? Why not? And, and then if you don't want to make it past the conquest, if you don't want to make it past the dance of the dragons, it, you, you can decide when you stop. You don't have to, you don't have to read all of this. Just, just read bits and pieces. And then I started it and the audiobook was amazing. I, I did not immersion read, I just audiobooked it. And then I came in here to look at the illustrations because they're beautiful, but I love this so much. And I remember like, I, th there's parts of my drive to work and from work where I'm like, oh, when I was driving here, they were talking about Area Targaryen. And when I was driving here, they were talking about when Elisand went to the wall and I was driving over there. Or oh, that was when mm, Dance of the Dragons, this kind of stuff happened. This book, okay. It was towards the ends of the Dance of the Dragons. I won't say any, any spoilers, but there were two scenes that were very devastating towards this, the end of the Dance of the Dragons. And I was at the supermarket and I had my noise canceling headphones on and I kind of forgot that noise canceling means I don't hear the people around me, but they still hear me. And so I remember stopping by the onions. Funnily enough, I stopped by the onions and I was like, no, 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 no. Don't go there. I said, don't go there. You idiot. You fucking idiot. Don't go there. And then I started crying. And the people around me were looking at me like, this girl's weird. And I, and I grabbed my stuff and I went and I paid. And then I walked home. And then the second devastating scene happened. And I was walking and I was crying. I had tears streaming down my face, listening to my audiobook. And it was devastating, this book. It was devastating. And I loved it. I loved every second of it. I, will I reread this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to throw this audiobook on again. When we're done with the Song of Ice and Fire re slash re read along, I am going to throw on Night of Seven Kingdoms because that one has been longer and then I'm going to throw this back on because I loved it. I freaking loved it. Like I am just as excited for part two of this as I am for Winds of Winter. Like what does that tell you? I love this. Number four on my list. Loved it. Loved it. If you're a Song of Ice and Fire fan and I mean, come on, come on, come on. Number three is a book that I picked up kind of on a whim again. I wasn't, it wasn't part of, I think, a TBR. I just picked it up in January of 2022. And uh, I loved it. I, it felt like being in a dream. It felt like being in, I don't know, like a magical land, which it is, but I just loved this so much. And that was The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. And this book transported me. This book was everything. It has everything I love. It has the found family trope. It has, uh, it has kind of like a mentor mentee. It has a masked vigilante. It has amazing friendships. It has will they won't they tension. It has amazing politics. It has magic system. That's like dream magic, tarot magic. So beautiful magic, whimsical magic. It is a Venetian inspired story about our main character, Ren, who decides she wants to con her way into one of these wealthy families. Uh, in the city, in the main city. And she picks a family and she cons her way into it. And then when she's kind of getting into the family's good graces and stuff, she kind of finds out that they're broke. They don't have any money anymore. And she's like, well, I picked the wrong family, didn't I? Uh, but then things happen. Like I said, there's a mass vigilante, there's children that are like not sleeping and then dying. I think they're dying um, because of what happens. Again, this book I read before March, so it was a little bit affected by the blur of like not remembering a lot of details on it. And I read its sequel and it took me a good 200 pages so to get into the sequel. And then when I was in, I read the last 400 pages in two days. So then I, I was okay again, but I am going to also reread these this year. My friend Sarah 
kind of insanity sarah is hosting a read-along for this when the third book comes out i'm gonna re-listen to the audiobooks of these because i absolutely love the audiobooks as well and then i'm gonna read the last book when it comes out and i'm so excited i love these so so much i think that if you're looking for a different magic system and if you love politics and if you love the found family trope i think these books are just phenomenal and they're so lush and they're so freaking amazing they're emotional they, they have everything they have everything i think the only thing they don't have is an animal companion trope like if that was in it this would be my my number one probably but yeah love these books so 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 much and again the last book's coming out this year this is the right time to pick it up so go for it number two number two of 2022 is of course if you've been here if you've seen me if you've talked to me Babel by R.F. Quarrel. This book was made for me. This book is literally, it was written for someone like me. Um, this is a dark academia. Do I need to tell you what Babel is about? Dark academia, Oxford, magic system, uh, talking a lot about colonialism, talking a lot about languages and something that I, um, that I realized because I was watching someone else's favorite books of the year and they had this on there and they talked about why it was their favorite. Um, what discussion topics really uh, impacted them and what made them love this book so 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 much and i realized that person never once mentioned the languages and i'm like that is why i loved it because i speak seven languages so this book literally it, it discussed things that i think about on a monthly basis maybe and it was amazing to see that in this book form i loved it i loved all the talk about languages and translations and uh everything I loved it and I felt so seen in certain scenes uh, uh, when we talk about languages and stuff. So I love this so, so much. I actually have a full reading vlog on this on the channel so I won't spend too much time talking your ear off about this. So I will leave it linked everywhere so you can check it out. But yeah, I loved Babel so much because of that. I loved the characters. I also loved, I loved the first half of the book more than the second half, which is the scene, like all the half where they are at the school and learning and talking about things and history and languages and translations and stuff. I think a lot of people would find that stuff boring, but that's the stuff that I absolutely loved about this book. Um, but I loved all of it. I just had a one small part of the book where I was like, where are we going? And when my camera cut me off, so I don't remember exactly where I was, but basically um, the little part of the book where I thought, okay, where are we going? Where are you taking us, Arv Kong? And how long are we getting there? Because we're getting the end of the book. Um, that didn't last long enough to impact my enjoyment. I love this. This is one of my favorite books of all time, I think. I am gonna reread this. I loved it so much. I I just knew I was gonna love it. I even started out that vlog saying, I know this is gonna be a five star read. I know this is probably gonna be my favorites of all time. I definitely know it's gonna be my favorites of the year. And I wasn't wrong. I love this book so much. I loved it with all my heart. I know it's not for everybody. I know that some people are gonna say this is overhyped. This is not at all worth all the hype that people are giving it. Maybe, but for me it is. This book meant so much to me that I could not not put it on this list. And it absolutely deserves the number two spot on this list. I love this with all my heart. So my favorite book of the year. What was my favorite book of the year? Whew, it is a book that I also read at the end of the year. I think I finished this in December. Again, this is why I do not, I do not film these videos early because I read this book and I was very, very innocently going into it thinking, Meh, what could happen in this book? Thing. this book is safe it was not safe children it isn't don't do this to yourself prepare yourself watch out protect your hearts fool's errand by miss robin hobb this is the first book in the tawny man trilogy which is the third trilogy in her realm of the elderlings if you don't know the um, realm of the elderlings is a 16 book series by Robin Hobb, and we have three trilogies and one quartet. It uh, starts off with the Farsia trilogy, which is uh, Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. Royal Assassin was in my top favorite books of the year when I read that book. Uh, then there is the Life Ship Traders series, which I finished off this year. I started it, I think, last year, which I think means that Ship of Magic was in my top books of last year as well. Robin Hobb has been making her way onto my top favorite books every single year that I've read one of her books. This year I finished off Live Ships. I actually have a discussion video here on the channel where we go spoiler free and then it's a spoiler. So I will leave it linked as well if you wanna check that out. I loved having that chat with some of my friends. And then I picked up Fool's Errand. And I was talking to my friends. I was like, you know what? Well, okay, everyone says that Tawny, okay. Everyone says that Fits in the Fool is the best because it's the conclusion of the Realm of the Elderlings. But everybody says that Tawny Man is the best trilogy 
of all the trilogies. And I was like, okay, well, I could see her really hurting us in the last book because I knew she wanted it. Originally, the plan was for Fool's Fate to be the last book in the Realm of the Underlings. And then she wrote the Rainwell Chronicles and the Fits in the Fool trilogy. So I thought, what can a book one in a series do? Nothing. It cannot do anything. And not even, not even, not even anything special, but like the first couple hundred pages, we have a reunion from two characters and it's been two years probably since I read Assassin's Quest. So for me, these characters hadn't seen each other in two years. And having those first couple hundred pages where they just catch up with what they've been up to were so emotional for me. I had tears in my eyes with just these characters sitting down, having a cup of tea and talking about what they've been up to. And just that alone, the fact that she could make me cry at that, I was like, woman, I trust you with my, well, not with my heart because you will shatter it, but I trust you. I trust you. I, I just know your books are gonna be favorites for me. All of them, all of them. And I kept on reading. And I took, this book took me a bit of time to read because I was extremely busy again when I was reading it, but it did not hinder my impact. It did not hinder my emotions. It didn't hinder anything. The fact that I was away from it for a while, it still made it onto my number one spot of 2022 just because of how much I love these characters. These characters mean everything to me. I know, I know that so many people don't like Fitz and he is the main character because the first trilogy starts with him being a child and he's being dropped off by his maternal grandparents at the castle because he is the bastard uh, son of the king in waiting. His maternal grandparents say, hey, we don't have the money to raise this child. He is also the prince's child and you guys clearly have more money than we do so you can raise him we're done with him and that's kind of the story of the first book and we follow Fitz from there and of course here Fitz is older and I just I love Fitz I know that's not for every, that he's in for everyone I know that he's a controversial main character but I love him and I love the fool I know I love Night Eyes I love Ketrick I love everybody I was so happy to be back in the six duchies to see everyone I cried when I heard the name of that one horse because it brings us back to life ship and it's inspired by like this person named their horse after someone in life ships and i was like i'm done i'm done emotionally this woman will hurt you she will break you but oh damn if it isn't worth it these books are amazing phenomenal i loved fool's errand so much i cannot wait to continue on with the realm of the elderlings this year my goal is to finish the whole realm of the elderlings this year so probably in my top of 2023 we will have Assassin's Fate because it's everyone's favorite uh, but I think that I'm in for a treat this year to read all these books I'm so excited if you haven't read The Realm of the Otherlings yet please 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 do yourself a favor and pick them up but do prepare your hearts and your emotions and your tissues and your box of chocolates because you'll need it that my dear friends is my top 10 books of 2020 too. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book was uh, or your top two or your top three or whatever and let me know if you've read any of these what you think of my ranking. Are you surprised by some of these books? Were some books on here that you think absolutely not? You shouldn't be on there or are there books where you're like oh I'm surprised they're low or surprised they're so high? Let me know in the comments down below. If you just want to let me know that you were here leave a dragon emoji and until next time happy reading. Bye!